For this part, we are going to talk about documenting functions. And this is incredibly important, although we are not adding more functionality. All we are doing in here is explaining what our function does. And this might not seem important, but it really is. Because functions can get really complicated, so you want to explain them. And this is something you are going to notice when you are starting to code, where you are writing a function and then don't look at it for a couple of weeks. You probably have absolutely no idea what you did. And when you look at other people's code, it might be even worse. And well, explaining what your function does is just good form and really helps you when you work with other people. And there are two things you can do to your functions to explain what they do. The most common one is you just add some explainer text, and this is called a doc string. And besides that, you can also add what is called type hinting. And all that really means is you indicate what you expect for the parameters and for the return value of the function. And if you have all of that, your function should make quite a bit more sense. So let's implement all of this. All right, here we have a very simple example of a function. If I run this, we are just printing two arguments. So obviously this isn't complicated, but I just want to keep it simple. And to explain what your function does, you can add what is called a doc string at the beginning of a function. And a doc string you create with quotation marks like any other string. And for a doc string, you always want three quotation marks on each side. It looks like this, and Sublime essentially turns this into a comment by default. And now for this doc string, you can write whatever you want, or well, whatever explains your function the best. Let's say I could call this one a simple function that prints two parameters. And if I run the function, we don't see any difference. However, now what you can do, you can print the name of the function, test in my case, then dot, underscore, underscore, doc, and underscore, underscore again. And if I run this, I get the doc string of the function or a simple function that prints two parameters. Now, why we're using two underscores before and after this doc, you are going to understand later on. For now, just write it like this. It really isn't too important for you right now. Just remember how it looks like. I suppose another way you could be accessing this is by writing help and then test. And if I run this, we get some more information about the function. And in here, we also can see the doc string, a simple function that prints two parameters. And it is fairly common to use either of those to understand what a function does. Meaning if you write code with a team, you really want to use this. But well, that's basically it. It isn't that complicated. Now, besides that, what you can also do is to hint what you are expecting for these parameters and what the function should return. And right now, this function doesn't return anything. So let's add return a plus b. And now I want to indicate that for these parameters, I am expecting integers. All you have to do for that is to add a colon after the parameter and then add integer. If you wanted to, you could also set a default parameter for this. And this you do in a normal way by just adding an equal sign and let's say 10 for this value. And all this really means, I am telling other programmers that for this a parameter, I am expecting an integer and by default, this parameter is going to be 10. And for B, I also want an integer, but I don't have a default value. And with that, we have some default parameters where we are indicating that we are looking for integers. And let's say for B, I want a default value of zero. And with that, we are indicating to other programmers that we want two integer values that both have a default parameter. Meaning if I run the code now, we can see, well, not much of a difference because this isn't supposed to influence what the function actually does. And besides that, we can also indicate what is being returned from this function. So this line here. And this could do by adding an arrow after the function 
but before the colon. That's really important. And then here you again add the name of the type. And here again, use the name of the type you want to return. For an integer, this would be int. I guess other data types could be str for string, bool for a boolean, list for, well, a list, and dictionary for a dictionary. But in my case, I want to stick with an integer. And now I can run this again, and we again don't see any kind of difference. And a really important thing you have to understand about type hinting is that all of this is optional and it can be ignored. So for example, what I could be doing is add a string in here and also a string in here. I know, let's say test. If I run this now, the function is still going to work. Let me comment out those two lines here to make it a bit more readable. So now we have indicated for the function we are expecting an integer, but when we actually call the function, we are adding two strings. And Python doesn't really mind, it still works just fine. So you don't have to follow it, it's mostly an indication of what is being expected. But all right, with that, we have covered all you need to know about functions.